Okay, so in this video we're going to talk about the physical definition of work, which came about during the Industrial Revolution when people needed a standard of what work was so that they could describe what machines can do. The most common measure was a horse, and basically it's like saying, okay, how far can the average horse apply force in order to lift something? The way that they would test this is by creating kind of like an Atwood's machine where a horse would be lifting a weight out of a hole in the ground. James Watt famously concluded that this is 550 pounds for one foot. There's James Watt. Now, of course, this was not something that was tested super well. Um, it was just something that he came up with so that he could describe what it was a machine could do. Basically, as a selling point to try and say, this machine can replace the number of horses that you have doing this task or the you know amount of ox that is doing this one task. And again, nobody really knows if James Watt actually used like some intense measurements. It's kind of hard to say what the average force that any horse could apply for. He was just interested in using this new concept to try and sell his steam engines. So work is a force applied for a distance. The equation is really simple. It's force times distance. If you have a horse pulling a cart of coal for 12 meters, for example, with a force of 20 newtons, you would figure out the work done by the horse by just taking that force and multiplying it by the distance. So 20 newtons times 12 meters is 240 newton meters. Now a newton meter is a unit of work. It's the definition of um, you know work, what we use. But we also use newton meters again when we talk about torque. Torque is force applied at certain radii away from a point of rotation. So to help us remember that these aren't newton meters of torque, they're newton meters of work, it doesn't help that those words are so similar, uh, is we call newton meters of work a joule. So you would say that this is 240 joules. This is, of course, named after James Prescott Joule, who, while he didn't invent a nicotine device, he did work as an English brewer. Uh, he was a physi physicist as a hobby, uh, mostly so that he could improve the efficiency of his copper stills that he used to brew with. Um, along this vein, he worked with Lord Kelvin and famously helped him develop the Kelvin temperature scale. And later we'll learn that he developed a relationship between work and heat. And that kind of has been like an important thing for us in science, but you know, we don't need to deal with that right now. Okay, so what if there's an angle? Well, as you can see, this box is being pulled by a force at an angle. A certain distance, we'll call that D. The work that's done by this force is only coming from the component of force that's parallel to the distance. So only the component of force that's parallel to the distance does any work. The way that you figure out what that is, is you turn that force into a right triangle you have components, and you'll take the component that's parallel. Most of the time, the component is cosine theta, so F cosine theta times D. This is often written in physics textbooks a different way. It's just FD cosine theta. It doesn't really matter how you write it because, you know, it's commutative or whatever that thing is that you learned in the math class. I don't know what it is. Here's an example. A strap inclined upward at 45 degrees pulls the suitcase through the airport. The tension in the strap is 20 newtons. How much work does the tension do if the suitcase is pulled 100 meters? Okay, here we have our suitcase being pulled a distance D. We'll call it 100 meters. And that tension is going to be up and to the right T. I would like only the cosine component of that tension because it's adjacent to theta. So W equals T cosine theta times D or 20 newtons times cosine of 45 times 100 meters, which is 1,414.2 newton meters or we'll call it joules. Here is another example. Your dog is running wild. You pull back with a force of 200 newtons at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal in an attempt to slow them down. But the dog continues to run 15 meters. How much work does your pull do? Well, I'm going to draw your dog as a box because they sit around and do nothing. So may as well draw them like they're doing that. You pull back with a force. We'll call that F. And it says that your angle is above the horizontal. So that would be this angle right here. Now we'll talk about if we should use 
that angle of what is it 30 degrees in just a second but right now let's focus on the fact that this dog is still running forward so the distance traveled is 15 meters all right so even though you pull back on the dog it goes forward that means that the dog is going to be moving kind of in the opposite direction of your pull uh, and we're going to we're going to see what kind of a work that this does work is force cosine theta times d or you could do it fd cosine theta well here is our question do we use 30 degrees you could use 30 degrees but it's more appropriate for you to use the unit circle angle the unit circle angle would be this right here 180 minus 30 or 150 degrees now if you use cosine of 150 you will get not zero negative 0.866 okay so then I'll put in cosine or F sorry 200 newtons times cosine of 150 times 15 meters when you put all that together you're gonna get a negative number because cosine of 150 is negative and you'll get negative 2598 point whatever zero or something I don't know uh, Newton meters or joules okay notice that if we were to do the exact same thing but with 30 degrees cosine of 30 is just 0.866 so if instead you used 200 newtons times cosine of 30 degrees you would get the same number 2598 joules it just wouldn't be negative well so the idea here is that the cosine component of this force F cosine theta is in the opposite direction of that distance traveled so we call this a negative work if you can just identify that that cosine component points in the opposite direction then you can use that 30 degrees or whatever angle it gives you in reference to that and force that number to be negative you would just choose that to be negative because you notice that the component of the force and the direction traveled are in opposite directions sometimes you, you'll just do this intuitively like if there is friction for example so here you push a box 30 kilograms 10 meters of the force of 300 newtons friction resists with a force of 50 newtons we want to find the work specifically done by the force of friction well in this case if I draw the forces on the object I'm gonna have my push forward a force of friction backwards there'll be some weight we'll call that mg and a normal force up and and it travels some distance we'll call that d of 10 meters if this problem was asking me to find the work done by the applied force of 300 newtons well that force and the distance are in the same direction you'd get a positive value of work but when I'm asked to find what the work done by that force of friction is it's pretty obvious to me that that force of friction and this distance are going to be in opposite directions so if I want to figure out what the work is done I'm going to need to do negative force of friction times the distance or negative 50 newtons times 10 meters and I'll get negative 500 Newton meters or joules of course if, if you're like oh my god what happened to the cosine theta uh, I'm freaking out well the unit circle angle of opposite direction is 180 degrees and cosine of 180 degrees is <gasps> negative one so if you were to put cosine theta and used 180 degrees as theta then you would just get a negative one in your number that gets multiplied out and it would just force the work to be negative all right so let's kind of do an example talk about why you would have negative work basically whenever you add all of the works being done on an object by you by friction by the floor you're going to get what's known as the network so the network is sigma w and we say that it is the net force times the distance which we can call it D you can also call it Delta X we'll do that later but for now we'll just call it D 
A force of 180 newtons is applied to a box of 35 kilograms across a level surface with a coefficient of friction of 0.5. The box travels 5 meters forward. Let's go through this example and find the work done by the applied force, friction, and then the total work. Okay, so if I've got my box right here, again, applied force forward, friction back, weight down, normal force up. If I want to find the uh, work done by the applied force, it's super easy because the distance traveled is in the same direction as that 180 newton force. So 5 meters, 180 newtons. The work done, we'll call this by, I don't know what is happening here. Great. Bad image, bad image, bad image. Go away, go away. Thank you. Uh, work done by the applied force is... F times D, so 180 newtons times 5 meters, or 900 newton meters, or joules of energy. Okay, so that's the work done by the applied force. Finding the work done by friction, uh, I've got to first figure out what that force of friction is. Remember, friction is mu times the normal force. In this case, the weight is equal to the normal force, so mu mg or 0.5, that's what mu is here, times 35 kilograms, and then I'm going to use 10 for g, 10 meters per second squared. So half of 350, which is 175, yeah. Okay, so that's the force of friction, 175 newtons. Okay, so when I find the work done by that lowercase f friction, I need to find the force of friction and multiply by the distance. Of course, I'm going to need to recognize that that friction force and the distance are in opposite directions. So that's cosine 180 or negative 1. Basically, I'm going to do the negative friction times the distance or negative 175 newtons times 5 meters, which equals negative 8. 75 newton meters or joules. Okay, well, if I wanted to find the, this should say the total work done. If I wanted to find the total work done in the box, it's asking me to figure out the network. The network would be the net force times the distance. And here I can see the normal force and the weight they balance out. So the net force would be the applied force minus friction or 180 minus 175, which is 5, yeah, 5 newtons. And if I multiply that net force of 5 newtons by a distance of 5 meters, I'll get 25 newton meters, or joules. At this point, maybe you see an even faster way that we could find the total work or the network that's done on the object. 25 joules is the difference of these two works. So another way of finding the network is thinking, okay, well, I will net the works. Wow. What is WF plus? So what are those two works? In this case, it's 900 joules for the applied force plus a negative 875 gives you 25 joules of work, same answer. So the idea is that certain things do work for you, meaning in the direction of the distance that you're trying to get the object to travel. Other things do work against you, meaning they work in the opposite direction of the you know distance you want it to travel. So if you're designing something that, you know, takes coal and drives it across the country, the forces that take that coal in the right direction do positive work. The forces that resist that would be doing negative work. So friction is not always going to give you negative work, but it very often is going to give you a, a negative work. Here's one more example. Force of 100 newtons is applied at an angle of 53 degrees to a box of 30 kilograms across a level surface with a coefficient of friction of 0.2 for 4 meters. What is the total work done on this box? Okay, so again, I can do a couple of different things to find the total work done. I'm just going to draw a free body diagram, which will have the weight down, mg, that force is applied 53 degrees. We'll say it's to the right. It looks like it's in the same direction. I'll label that F. 
and that will be at an angle of theta. Then there's going to be a, that weight's going to actually be a lot bigger, a normal force up and a force of friction backwards. Okay, so in this problem, if I want to find the total work, I need to figure out how much work is pushing the box to the right in that direction of the 4 meter distance, and then how much force is opposed to it. You may not remember this, but I need to take this angled force and turn it into an F cosine and F sine theta component. All right, now F cosine, that's going to be doing a positive work. Okay, I can call that the work done by the applied force. The work done by the applied force is going to be F cosine theta times the distance. No surprises there. Let's go ahead and figure out what that is. That is 100 newtons times cosine of 53 times 4 meters. So 100 cosine 53, 4 meters, that is 240.7 Newton meters or joules of work. Okay, now to figure out what the work done by friction is, I have this problem because I gotta, first of all, I can see friction in the distance or in opposite direction, so I can make that negative FD, but I gotta figure out what friction is. And to figure out what friction is, I have to figure out what the normal force is. Now, the normal force points up, so does F sine theta, so those two are going to balance the weight that points down. What I mean is the normal force plus F sine theta equals mg. Okay, so to find the normal force, I'm just going to take mg and then subtract F sine theta. So the weight minus F sine theta. The weight is 30 kilograms times 10, so 300 newtons. And then F sine theta is going to be 100 sine of 53. 100 sine of 53, that's something easy, right? 100 sine of 53, nope. Eh, maybe 79.86 we'll call that 79.9 just to really upset you oh so 300 minus 70 it's like tw it's basically 20 right 20.1 is that right that sounds right mm -hmm. 300 oh yeah there we go 20.1 nope i'm such an idiot 220 all right, so the normal force is 220.1. I can use that then to find the force of friction because friction is going to be mu times that normal force or 0.2, the coefficient of friction, times 220.1 newtons. So 220.1 times 0.2 is 44.02, we'll just call that 44 newtons. Now to find the network I would do, or sorry, the force, the work done by the force of friction, I would do negative 44 newtons times the distance of four meters, which gives you 176, negative 176 newton meters or joules. The network, or the total work, is then 240.7 joules minus 176 joules, or 64.7 joules. If you'd like to verify that that is the total work done, then you can actually find the net force and multiply that by the distance and see if you get the same number. You do. Congratulations. You watched this long video about work. You did a good job. You did good work. There you go.